Hello, welcome to my channel. M. Rosie here. If this is your first time of clicking on my video, you are welcome. If you've been watching my videos, thank you for always coming back. This morning, I want to talk about religion. To me, religion is a relationship with God, a relationship with Jesus Christ. But the way people take religion is gotten out of hand. First of all, there's so much judgment from uh, people who say they are religious. There's so much judgment from churches. You see, we are not supposed to judge. It's God Almighty that's supposed to judge. Then now I want to take you guys back to history. You see, a long time ago, churches in Europe, in America, there's history, it's on the internet, you can google it and you will be horrified about what, what, what went on during that time. I even saw a movie made about it, real stuff that happened, you see, what um, young girls, young girls who got pregnant, what they went through, because in those days, when uh, young girls get pregnant, that's in Europe, America, and all this, um, uh, maybe uh, um, uh, American continent, Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, all over. It's it happened all over, you see. When a young person got, uh, got pregnant in those days, the man who got her pregnant has no question to answer it's the girl that will be looked down on as if she's done something that nobody else expect, expects to happen in this world they take these young girls to um to churches you know to the uh, novitiates the, yeah they call them novitiates where the reverend sisters and the reverend fathers uh, uh, lived you know they took all these young girls there and when they were, some of them, when they had their baby, their baby are uh, kind of sent uh, uh, six feet below. I saw the movie. It's not stories. And you see, an uh, archaeologist dug up certain places where they found more than 800, uh, 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 what would I call it? I don't know what to say on this video because you don't really know what to say. When you say something, it's something that uh, YouTube doesn't want you to say. Well, you guys understand where I'm going. So that's what they did to children who were born out of wedlock, like they said, they, they call it, you know. And when you come to Africa, a lot of things was, was, was happening there, you see. These same religious people did a lot of bad stuff. And now, they are here now judging judging people you see judging people we have no right to judge it's not our place to judge everybody has something that he or she is doing that's against god so why are people judging why are people in the catholic church judging why are people in Anglican church judging? Why are people in, in Methodist church judging? Why are people in Pentecostal churches judging? Why? When in those days they did a lot of, they committed a lot of atrocities. A lot. A lot of atro atrocities they committed against uh, human, humankind, against young people, against people who had disability. You see? In those days, they didn't allow people who, ha who had disability to, to live. So many things they, they did on, the, on this earth. So many. In some countries, twins were not allowed to live. You see? In some countries, twins were not allowed to live. So a lot of things happened. So we have no right this time to judge from all these churches. We have no right. We have no right to judge anybody. We have no right to say because somebody is, is gay, you condemn the person. You have no right to say because somebody is a lesbian, you condemn the person. You have no right at all because even those who say they are straight, those who say they are straight, they do a lot of stuff behind closed doors. 
so many things against, against God. They do a lot of things against God. Because they are behind closed, closed doors. Nobody knows, knows what's going on. They are doing things that you can never imagine. I have researched it. I have asked questions. Because there are people who don't hide what they do behind closed doors. When you talk to them, they open up. They tell you everything. Things that you will put your hands. When you hear this stuff, you will put your hands on your head and you start screaming. Those are things going on. When you look on the internet, they are doing things that you cannot imagine. Things that you cannot imagine. So why do we condemn each other? Why? Why do we, do we judge? It's, you don't have any right to judge anybody. Same thing, I don't have any right to judge anybody. Judgment is for God. It's for God Almighty to judge. When you see something, you don't like it. Look the other way. It has nothing to do with you. You didn't create that person. You are not the person that will judge that, that, will judge that, 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 that same person when the person passes on. So what's your business? Why would you stand in the pul pulpit, or what do they call it, and condemn people when you are, are, are doing a lot of things behind closed doors? In those days, reverend fathers, even till now, reverend fathers get on with reverend sisters. They do it behind closed doors. You see, those who call themselves uh, 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 men of God, pastors, they do a lot of things, whether they are married or they are not married. They do so many things, yet they stand there and condemn people. Who are you to judge? Who are you to condemn anybody? You didn't create that person, so it's not your right. You have no right. You have no right to tell people what to do. And that is why I have, that's, I've got something against those. That is, I'm not happy with those who go to these people to lay their hands on their heads for prayer. You get up, you go to a reverend father. You kneel down there. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Then he will murmur whatever is going to murmur from his mouth and say, my son, my daughter, you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. That man you went to confess to, you know, that man you went to confess to, you don't know what he's doing behind closed doors. Just because he's wearing a robe of a reverend father, you think he's righteous. Or is it the pastor's? or the priest, or whatever. Reverend Father's priest, they are the same. Pastors stand there, and they, they, you, you see them talking, you think, yes, oh, this is a man of God. This is a woman of God. But after, after they've done that, what do they do behind? They are the ones chasing people's wives. They are the ones chasing people's husbands. They are the ones who have toy boys. They are the ones who have uh, uh, younger girls that they, they befriend. They are the ones who do a lot of things. They leave that place. They go to, to native doctors. You see? They go to native doctors. They do a lot of things that you don't expect. Then you will not carry yourself and kneel down there and tell them to pray for you. When you can talk to your God direct. You see? You can talk to your God direct. God is everywhere. God is everywhere. You don't need anybody. To, 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 you don't need an agent. You don't need an in-betweener. You don't need a third party to, to direct what, whatever you've done to God. You can stay in your home and confess to God. Just say, God, I'm sorry. I have done this. Forgive me. Then you listen for God's words. After you've confessed, listen because God will always give you an answer. God will always tell you. You see? I don't understand what is going on these days. All these churches everywhere. I don't know. I don't understand. Don't get me wrong. There are churches that are doing the right thing. There are priests, reverend father, whatever you call them. There are pastors. There are all of them doing the right thing. There are good ones. There are good ones. Who fear God. There are priests and reverend fathers who keep their, 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 themselves to themselves. They serve God with, with open mind, cool mind. 
They don't do all those stuff. So there are good people. There are good pastors. You see? But then what I want to, to know is that no matter how good somebody is, that person could be tempted. Jesus Christ was tempted three times. Three times by the devil. So who are you? Who are you to the devil that the devil will not tempt you? Who are you? Who are you that the devil will not tempt? You see? Even when you are praying, you are, you are, you are sitting down on your own, praying to God. The devil comes there to say rubbish into your ears. You see? And if you have a weak mind, the, the prayer goes from, 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 from to a different thing. You see? That's why sometimes I don't blame some of these men of God that, because I know that they don't have strong will and the devil takes over. I know that. You see? I know that. It happens. It happens. So you have to be careful. There was one day I was sitting down praising my God, praying to God, you see? And the devil came. The devil came. I, I kind of felt as if I, I was feeling sleepy. You see? And as I felt I was feeling sleepy, all of a sudden, this reverend sister appeared. An angel dressed like a reverend sister appeared and touched my hand. And when she touched my hand, I realized that I was reciting something else. While I was praying, because I was feeling sleepy, the devil came and took over. I was murmuring something because as soon as the reverend sister touched me, I realized it and came out of it. So God Almighty, Jesus Christ, who redeemed my soul four years ago, Jesus Christ redeemed my soul. So Jesus Christ sent this angel to come and get me out of it. The, the devil is not your friend. The devil is not your friend. The devil is not your brother. It's nothing to you. He's just there to push you off course, take you away from God, to snatch your soul from God. That is what the devil is there for. So you have to be careful whether you're a man of God, a woman of God, a priest, a, a reverend father, a, 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 a prophet, a prophetess. You have to be careful. If you don't have willpower, you will fall for it. You see? In my own case, because I was feeling sleepy. So I stopped that. When I, when I want to talk to my God, I make sure that I'm at a lot. That I'm not sleepy. I am not going to give the devil that, that chance to come into my life again. To change what I was saying. To change my prayer to God. To what will suit him. I don't speak any, any Yama Yama language. But when the angel touched me, I realized I was reciting something else. You see? Therefore, I will never, ever give the devil that, that chance to do that. I don't, when I know that I'm feeling sleepy, I just tell Jesus Christ to protect me. I call on Archangel Michael and I go to sleep. There's no way I will sit down when I know that I'm not concentrating to talk to God because the devil will always be there to tempt you or to change what you are doing without you knowing. Without you knowing. So you have to be careful. Be very careful. All these people we call fake pastors, fake uh, prophetess, fake uh, 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 prophet, uh, fake this, fake that. Some of them is not them. Some of them is not them. They meant well when they started. Some of them meant well when they started. But one way or the other, the devil found its way into their lives. That is what the devil does. The devil is cunning. The devil is cunning. You see? The devil is cunning. But what I always say is the devil is not afraid. Face somebody when they are at a lot. But no. The devil will wait to just one weakness. The devil will stand by and wait for one weakness. No matter how you hold on to God, at the point of your weakness, the devil will tempt you. The devil will tempt you. That's what I'm saying. The devil did it to Jesus Christ three times. Three times the son of God was tempted. So who are you that the devil won't try you? But as for me, 
I am not going to give the devil that chance anymore. It's happened once and it will never happen again. Never. When I'm sleepy, I just call on Jesus. I call on the angels to protect me and I go to sleep. I leave all prayers, all discussion with Jesus, all discussion with God. I leave it to when I'm at an alert. When I know what I'm doing. Not when I'm feeling sleepy. You see? You have to be careful. You have to be careful. Because the devil's uh, 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 aim is to take you away from God. To put your soul in trouble. And when your soul gets in trouble, the devil will stand by and laugh at you. That is all. The devil has nothing to gain. The devil has nothing to lose. All he is doing is what he knows how to do best. He's doing what he knows how to do best. Deceit. Deceit. Very conniving. Very slimy. Very slimy and very conniving. You have to be at a lot. If you are for God, be at a lot. Don't sit down to pray when you are feeling sleepy. Don't sit down to talk to God when you are feeling sleepy. Just call on angels to protect you and go to sleep. The next morning when, when your body has rested, then you can talk to God. If you make that mistake to talk to God or to pray when you are feeling sleepy, I am sorry what you will get. <laughs> what you will get. You see, what you will get, you won't expect it. I am telling you, that is what happened to me. And I know, I know better now. I know better. But God loves me. Jesus Christ loves me. The, 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 the spirit world, they love me. That is why an angel was sent to get me out of it. Who knows what, what I would have turned to? Who knows what I would have turned to? After Christ redeemed my life four years ago. Then the devil thinks that Jesus Christ will sit by and watch him take me away from him. It's not possible. It is not possible. I have never served the devil. I will never serve the devil. It will never happen. Even before Jesus Christ redeemed my life, I wasn't serving the devil. I knew God, but I wasn't born again. I am born again and I am on a spiritual journey walking towards my God. Giving my soul insurance so that when I pass on, my soul will have a place near God. My soul will have a place in the kingdom of God. And that's what you should work on. That is what you should work on. Stop judging people. No matter what they do, God Almighty knows how to get them back. The Holy Spirit is always looming around at the right time to, 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 to send that, that person's uh, uh, soul back to God. The Holy Spirit is there. When the Holy Spirit, Spirit arrests you, you have nowhere to go. You have nowhere to go than to turn to God. You see, it's not by force. But the day will come when you wake up in the morning and say, yes, today I'm giving my life to God. Today I'm accepting Jesus Christ as my personal savior. That day will come. That day will come. And there's nothing you can do about it. Stop judging whether you are a priest, a reverend father, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a, a deacon, a deaconess, a, a prophet, a prophet, no matter what position or name or geo or whatever you call yourself in this religion uh, uh, journey, the religious journey, you need to stop judging people because you are not perfect. You are not perfect. You are not perfect. So you have no right to judge anybody. You have no right. It's, judgment is for God. Judgment is for God. You see? You have no right to judge anybody. Everybody has what they are doing. Everybody has skeleton in their cupboard. Everybody, whether you call yourself a, a general overseer, you call yourself a pastor, whatever you call yourself, everybody has something they are doing against God. 
whether you are good pastor or you are fake pastor or you are good uh, uh, a priest, you are fake priest, you are good uh, uh, a prophet of uh, or prophetess or fake prophet or fake prophetess. Everybody, none of nobody is righteous. Nobody, you see, nobody. And there are people who take all these, they are, they are men of God, they are geos and all prophet, prophet, they take them more than the way they take God. If you give God one quarter of the respect you give all these people that have, that have all these titles in all these churches, you give one quarter of that respect to God. My goodness, your life will be so good that you will not know what hits you. Your life will be so good. But you prefer to serve human beings. A pastor is coming into the church. You pull out your handkerchief. You start cleaning, cleaning his shoes. You see? Something that you will never do for God. Something that you will never do for God. What respect do you have for God? You see a disabled person. You discriminate against that person. What did God say? We all know that God created all of us in his image. All of us. So when you are against a disabled person, you are against a, 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 a somebody who, who the skin is different from yours, you are against all sorts of discrimination. Even the way people speak, people discriminate against them. You see? You see somebody who stammers and you are laughing. You are laughing at God. You see somebody who a cripple, you are laughing, you are laughing at God. You see? You are laughing at God. Then the color of the skin, white, black, yellow, olive, all that, you discriminate. Who are you? Who are you? Then it comes to religion. You see this one, we say, I am a Catholic. I am a Pentecostal. I am Methodist. I am that. So many discrimination. Even against the Muslim religion. Who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? Leave judgment to God who created us. We have no right. If, we, if all of you could put this energy. You are putting against each other. Against hu human beings. Against animals. Against uh, 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 nature. Plants. Trees. All these things. If you can put all this all this energy into fighting the devil. This world will be a better place. This world will be a better place. You see? We all have one common enemy. And that common enemy is the devil. Why are you not fighting the devil? Why are you against people? Human beings like you. Why? Yes, I know that there are some humans who behave like the devil. Yes. They are rare, but you find a way to, to redeem their soul for God. You find a way to be, of, of bringing them to God. You don't, you don't discriminate against them. You don't send them away from your church because they did one thing or the other. What is the problem? If you bring that person and counsel the person, win the person's soul for God, will there be any problem? Okay, you send the person away. What have you done? You've added that person to the collection that the devil has. Instead of you, of, instead of you to pluck people from the devil and give to God Almighty, who created all of us, including that devil, you send them away from your church. I don't want you to come to this church anymore because you did this, you did that. You discriminate. You send them away. So what's the point of having a church if you can't win souls? What is the point? Is that a business place? Is your church a marketplace? Is it a marketplace? It's supposed to be a place where you win souls. You win souls and bring them to God. It's not a marketplace where you make money for your own selfish end. You see? For your own selfish end. Everybody, you guys have to think twice. Think twice. Respect God. Because God created all of us. What is all this? What is it? 
If somebody wants to be a gay man, fine, that's the person's problem with God. If somebody wants to be a lesbian, well, it's that person's business. There's a way of doing it. You don't go and, and form, form a group. Oh, this group we are against, this group we are with. What is all this? What is it? What is it? A lot is going wrong in our churches. A lot is going wrong in our mosque. You see? So many stuff are going wrong. And what brings it is judgment. Being judgmental. That's what brings all these things. So that is all I have to say. Stop all this judgment. You see? Stop it. Stop it and win souls for God. It's just a pity that when Christ comes, a lot of people will, will be left behind. This is the 3D world. Christ is going to come to take people to the 5D world. So where do you belong there? Where? Where do you belong? For the fact that you are, you are, you are, you are the head of a church doesn't make you righteous. It doesn't make you righteous because everybody sins against God. Everybody. Everybody is a sinner. Everybody is a sinner. So nobody has a right to judge anybody. There are so many judgments going on around. So many. So and that is that got me angry. Because if we all are supposed to win souls and take them to God. Not condemn them. Not condemn them. Not judge them. We have no right to judge. We have no right to condemn. You see. Even most of these people will call fake pastors, fake this. I just told you, maybe when they started, they meant well. But then the devil came in when they didn't know. You see, before I didn't understand it until it happened to me. You see, until it happened to me. So it could happen to anybody. You could be sleepy and you feel that you are murmuring prayers to God. Then the devil will take over. It's not everybody that is lucky. It's not everybody that, 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 that God will send uh, 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 an angel to bring out of it. It's not everybody. So I count, I count myself very, very, very grateful. I am grateful to God for that. I am very grateful to God that God sent this angel to come and bring me out of it. And the devil is a liar. My soul is not for the devil. My soul is not for the devil. My soul is for God Almighty who created me. And I am holding on. I keep repeating myself. I am holding on to the garment of Christ. The devil can try anything that it likes. But my soul is not for you, the devil. My soul is not for you. Anyway, thank you for all for listening to me. You see, thank you for listening to me. And I'll see you guys in my next video. I am so, so pissed off with the devil. I am so pissed off with all these people that judge. You see? I am so pissed off with them. Thank you for listening and talk to you guys in my next video. Bye. I need to rest now. Thank you.